In order to talk about the origins of Tennessee marble, uh, we really need to travel back into deep time. Approximately 470 million years ago, we'll say, what was to become uh, North America, it wasn't a continent of North America yet, a shallow sea transgressed across this part of, uh, of the proto-continent. There were also some things tectonically active off to the east. As Africa was very slowly migrating, closing the gap between Africa and proto-North America, there were a few little pieces of real estate out there. Some people call them suspect terrains or whatever. They were gradually bumping in uh, to, and of course it was just not a little incidental bump, it was very slow. We're talking about movements that were, you know, on the order of magnitude of a few centimeters a year. So it wasn't a a uh, tremendous collision of any sort. There was a, a beginning of, of some mountains were beginning to rise off to the, the east of this shallow sea. And so there was a, a, a really a rather deep basin uh, that was formed. And then the hinge to the west of this deep basin is the area what we're interested in because this, this hinge area allowed optimum conditions, uh, proper sunlight uh, penetration, uh, uh, the energy of the, the waves and so forth, uh, supplying nutrients. For a, a buildup of, of, of colonial animals, they call bryozoan or mossy animals. And these animals, pretty much along with some other uh, species of, of organisms that were living at that time, of course, attached themselves to the, this mound of material that was building up. And uh, the, the interstices or spaces between the little organisms uh, was filling up with a, a limey mud, which was probably a product of the erosion of, uh, of these little animals themselves. But they built up a, a structure which we would describe today as, as a reef. And uh, the mounds uh, of, of, of organic matter probably got up to maybe oh, several hundred feet uh, in thickness. And uh, as the waves beat upon this uh, accumulation of organic matter, uh, it was broken down to form sand such as you would find on a beach today. The sand being actually made up of the uh, remains or particles of uh, lime uh, broken from the, the shells of the organisms. And this reef uh, extended at that time probably, uh, at least the, the belt that we have observed today, uh, approximately, you know, oh, 100 miles or so from the approximate location of Friendsville on north uh, up into the Hawkins uh, County uh, area. Now, uh, the material that accumulated was actually limestone. Uh, and, and, and it's been named by various geologists uh, that have mapped, you know, in this area going way back into the uh, 1800s, uh, uh, probably James Safford, uh, 1869, and others. And a lot of different names were applied uh, to this rock layer. And uh, one of them is Holston Limestone or Holston Formation. And so to geologists, basically, that's what this rock unit is known as. It's a coarsely crystalline limestone. And it has very low porosity, has a high compressive strength, uh, low uh, absorption values, and makes it excellent for a building stone. Because of these properties and its occurrence, uh, it has been quarried, polished, and when it's polished and sold commercially, it then takes on the name marble. So marble uh, is an economic term uh, in this particular case, but in the geologic sense, marble is a metamorphic rock. Now this is not a metamorphic rock, it's a limestone, it's a sedimentary rock, but it takes a high polish uh, and can be commercially uh, sold for interior use, exterior use, uh, as well as sculpture. Um, and uh, because of those uh, very properties, it's, in some instances you might say that uh, the Tennessee marble um, really uh, outdoes some of the actual metamorphic marbles that you would find in other states such as uh, uh, North Carolina and, and Vermont. Mm -hmm.